Don't act like you don't know that song. I know you're in church, but you know that song. We are in a series called what? Sweet emotions, sweet emotions. And last week, I really, really, I told you from the beginning of my message, I was going to lay the foundation. And that's really all that I got done last week. And it's so frustrating sometimes as a pastor because I leave here going, oh man, I got so much more to say. But hey, today we're going to take it and go a little bit deeper. And I promise by the end of the night, you're going to have some insight and some revelation on emotions. I guarantee it. Now, last week, remember what we talked about? We talked about the fact that 2 Corinthians 10.5 says that strongholds are, are built upon some things, okay? And I said that it's a thought that leads to a high thing, which leads to an argument, which leads to a stronghold. And that's kind of where I left you last week, really talking about the, the power of your thoughts and your thought life and all that stuff. But the title of the series is Sweet Emotions. But I felt like before I could ever talk about your emotions, I have to talk about your thought life. Okay, so now that we understand how thoughts are built in your mind from last week, and if you want to go back and listen to it, go back and listen to it. It'll do you good. And then come back and listen to this message even again, because you can't get everything I say in one message. I can't get everything I say in one message, all right? But anyway, check this out. Today, we're going to move into it. Now, listen to this. Let me ask you a question. You ready? Is the enemy defeated? Do you believe the devil is defeated? Yes. All right, that's exactly what the Bible says. The Bible's very clear about it. The devil is defeated. Colossians 2 says this. Having disarmed all principalities and powers, made, he made public spectacle of them, triumphing over them openly. How many of y'all agree with that? Every time I think of that verse, I think of Ace Ventura, you know, he, having disarmed. Okay, bad idea, but how many of y'all know what I'm saying? How many of you have seen that movie? How many of you have never seen Ace Ventura, Pet Detective, when nature calls the second one? Some of you need to go to the video store, video store tonight and rent that. You will laugh, but it, or like Michelle, you'll fall asleep. But anyway, nevertheless, uh, here's the truth. The truth of the matter is the enemy is defeated. So now the second question is automatically this, then where is the real war at? You know, because if you grew up in church circles, you've heard about spiritual warfare, and I'm not here to deny that there is an element of truth to spiritual warfare, but can I tell you, why do you fight the devil when the devil is defeated? The truth of the matter is, we are here to implement the victory that Jesus has already given us. That's the truth. Well, I don't go and fight the enemy. I don't fight the devil. The devil is defeated. I'm here to implement the victory. Now, check this out, though. For me to implement the victory, my mind and my emotions and my person has got to be in the right place. Otherwise, I open doors for the enemy into my life. I got that? All right, so now listen to this. So if we know that the enemy is defeated, then where is the battle? Where is the battle? I'm going to show you right here. Look at this. This is 2 Timothy 1.7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but, you know, or cowardice, craving, cringing, front, uh, uh, fawning, fear. But he has given us a spirit of power, love, and a well-balanced, well-disciplined, and self-controlled what? Mind. That's where the battle is. The battle is in the mind. Now, whenever we talk about the mind, we have to talk about your emotions. Because you can't just look at the mind all by itself. So check this out. Let me give you this. Beloved, I beg you, as sojourners as p and pilgrims, abstain from flesh, fleshly, fleshly lust, which war against the what? Soul. Everybody say the soul. The soul. The soul is made up of your mind, your will, and your emotions. I'm going to get deeper into that, but check this out. Look at 3 John 2. It says this. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things. How many of you want to prosper in all things? Okay, only about 12 of you. I don't know what the rest of y'all are going to do. <laughs> Whatever. All right, but listen to this. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health. How many of you want some health? Now, if you're under 40, you don't care. But if you're over 40, you really are all about that. All right? You're right. I started taking vitamins. But anyway, may be in health just as, or watch this. Let me give it to you this way. In proportion to your soul, which is made up of your mind, come on, help me out, will and emotions, 
prosper. Listen to it. Above all things, I wish that you may be in health just as your soul, your mind, will, and emotions prosper. Let me give it to you a different way, saying the same exact thing, though. You cannot be healthier than your soul. You can't, buy, can't be wealthier than your soul. Your mind, will, and emotions are what control your ability to receive the things of God and the victory of God in your life. Your mind, will, and emotions. Your mind, will, and emotions. The victory is in the soul. If you want to prosper, you first start with your mind, will, and emotions, and then it works its way out. Let me give it to you this way. I failed kindergarten and first grade. How? I don't know. I have a doctorate now. But anyway, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying, get this. All through school, I felt like I was dumb. They even told me that. <laughs> it wasn't until I went to college, first of all, it would have helped if I'd have showed up to school. But it, that's another story. But when I went to college, well, first of all, I wanted to be there and I wanted to grow and I wanted to learn. But it was in college where I figured out how I learn. And once I figured out how I learned, I realized I'm not stupid. I'm not dumb. I, it's not that I can't learn. It's just I learn a little bit different than sitting me in a room with a bunch of people. Why? Because I am wired too tight. <laughs> you sit me around a bunch of people, it's fellowship time. <laughs> Come on. I did my best work in the hallway. Well, it didn't take me long in college to figure out that I'll go to school, but I'm going to study at home. <laughs> seriously, seriously, seriously. I think our education system is set up for one personality type, but I'll shut up. I don't want to offend anybody. <laughs> I wish that you may prosper me in health just as your soul prospers. So now, if we are going to prosper in the things of God, We've got to know that it is our mind, our will, and our emotions that have to increase, have to grow, have to enlarge for us to be able to grow in the things of God. Now, last week, I kind of set the stage for the mind and how the mind works and all that. And honestly, I really just couldn't wait to get that message over with. Because this is where I wanted to go, but I had to get that one out first. Because now, let's talk about you prospering in your soul, your mind, will, and emotions, okay? We've oftentimes talked about the power of the mind, and the mind is limitless, and that, the, the, that if you want to untap the things of your life, untap your mind. Take your mind off of a limitation, and God will just do big things in your life. But oftentimes, we fail to address the other aspects of the soul, okay? So now... Check this out. The soul, the mind, the will, and what? Emotions. Now get this. I've often believed that the mind is the most powerful thing. I believe that. I believe your mind is the most powerful thing. Victory and defeat. Matter of fact, I say it this way. I got it in a note. Victory and defeat is determined by the soul in your life. Victory and defeat is determined by your mind, how you think. How many of you met people with, that are much more qualified than you, but they, can't, they didn't beat you? How many of you know, that I, I learned this in martial arts, that, that it isn't the statue of a man. It's how a man thinks. This is what the Bible says. How a man thinks in his what? Heart, so is he. Proverbs. How a man thinks in his heart, so is he. It's how you think. All right? It's how your mind, will, and emotions think and operate. Now, so get this. The soul, the mind, the will, and the emotions. The mind, will, and emotions. I believe that the mind is the most powerful thing that you can untap. But get this. Most people don't understand how to override their mind because they battle something else. Say, Pastor Charlie, is it their will? Not so much. The will just activates what the mind has already processed. But I can tell you this one right here. Your emotions? Anybody ever have an emotional fit? Don't lie. You're in church. Come on, I've had them. My goodness, I've had them. I've had them. Broke stuff, torn up my own stuff, torn up other people's stuff. I was great about being in the military. You tore up their stuff. Seriously, how many of you ever had an emotional fit? Just an emotional breakdown? Yeah. 
I think everybody here has. Now, the truth is, if we're going to live victorious, we have to make sure that the soul is prospering. For the soul to prosper, you can't say, I can control my mind, but I can let my emotions run rampant. Because your emotions actually, I'm going to tell you, almost will override your mind. I, matter of fact, I'm going to show you, well, I'm getting ahead of myself, but let, let me just go stick with my notes. There are feelings on the inside. What are emotions? There are feelings on the inside in our heart. Everybody say in my heart. In my heart, all right? Now get this. Which is caused by pain or pleasure. There are emotions on the inside, okay? These feelings, all right? Which are caused by pain or pleasure. And they will try to move you in a certain direction. It is possible. Here, hear it. Let, hear me out. It is possible to know that you probably should not beat your kids. It is possible to know you probably shouldn't mouth off to your wife. If she's carrying a gun. I, I had to add that part because you guys wasn't responding. But I mean, you know, it is possible to know what to do and know the right thing to do. Come on, y'all. You, you know you shouldn't. But it's possible to have an emotion on the inside of you rolling that overrides what you know in your mind you shouldn't do. <laughs> Come on now. You know, I mean, you know, call, well, Pastor, what happened? I was temporarily insane. No, you had a moment where you allowed your emotions to rule over your entire being, and you allowed your emotions to get away. And because your emotions, no matter if your mind knew it was right or wrong, it doesn't matter. Your emotions overrode. Your emotions overrode. Your emotions have actually, it's amazing because. Your emotions are almost wired to react. It's almost a reflex, right? You slap me, I slap you back, right? It's like one time Michael was walking up to the house. I think I've told you this story before. He turned out all right, but uh, <laughs> we were walking up to the house, and for some reason, we were opening the door. I still remember it so vividly. We, we were opening the door, and he mouthed off to his mom, and and this was this is not good. I don't. I, I stopped after this, but <laughs> he mouthed off, and I'm telling you, it was like there was an emotion that was faster than my mind. Come on, y'all hear what I'm saying? It was like blah 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 pow. It was like what happened? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I bet you won't do that again. Anyway, it was an emotion on the inside of me because I could never talk to my parents that way. If I talked to my parents that way, we'd be picking ourselves up. Now, granted, God spoke to my heart about that and said, never use your hands, but to love on your kids. We use other things to spank our kids, but <laughs> not now. But I, I, I'm being very serious, though. We used other things to, to discipline the kids, not our hands. Your, hand, your kids should never duck your hands. Your hands are there to show love. Are you following me? But you can be in a moment, come on, we've all had them, everybody in here has had them, where something happens and it's like your mind can't catch it fast enough. You just react and that reaction is an emotion. So there's why I tell you that an emotion can almost be overpowering the mind, even though your mind know it's, knows it's right. I, I met one guy one time, he was talking to me, he's actually related to Michelle, kind of crazy, but anyway, <laughs> we were, he was leaving Chrysler parking lot one day. And the person in front of him was just not cooperating, going too slow, and he had good insurance. He just ran it out, ran over their car. And he said, What happened? I got mad. How many of you know that's a fit? How many of you know that's an emotion override? Yeah. See, listen to this. It is possible to know the right Bible verses. It is possible to have the right will, but it's also possible to have emotions that are completely off hinge and not understand why God's not blessing your life. And it's because your emotions are a wreck. For you to prosper, you have to prosper in your spirit, soul, and body. Your soul must be whole. Y'all get that? Man, that was really, really good. I hope I can say that tomorrow. Your soul must be whole, all right? So now get this, get this. What are feelings, or what are emotions? They are feelings on the inside of your heart which causes pain or pleasure, and they will try to move you in a direction. Emotions have the potential of moving us. 
to one way or the other. Even if your mind says no, your emotions say yeah. And now here's what's powerful and wild about emotions all at the same time. Pain or pleasure. Emotions do not recognize whether something is good and godly or demonic and wrong. In other words, you have an emotion. You have an emotion. You say you want to go out and club and drink. And you have an emotion that says, man, I love to drink. I love to party and drink. And you have an emotional connection to that. Then get this. Your emotional connection overrides your mind because your mind says, I shouldn't be out clubbing. I don't have any money. I'm using a credit card to go out and party. I mean, you know, that's dumb. But the emotion overrides all that. Because the emotion recognizes I want pleasure. So emotions don't have, in a sense, right or wrong. They just drive you in a direction. Y'all get, getting what I'm saying? I'm going to show you how to conquer it here in a little bit. Check this out. If you can master your emotions, you can master your entire life. For sure. If you can master your emotions and how you respond and how you control your emotions... You can master your entire life, I promise you. Check this out. What are emotions? Now, we all understand these, depression, anxiety, worry, doubt, but they are all rooted in a spirit of fear. And I talked about that last week. And then you have things like joy, peace, happiness, excitement, love. All those are rooted in love. You all follow me? So get this. Emotions have two roots, fear and in love. Absolutely. Every emotion you have, every emotion you have, by the time I, I, I let you guys go tonight, I'm going to challenge you to begin to take count of your emotions. Ask yourself, why do I feel that way? Why do I feel that way? Sounds kind of like a counseling session, but I promise you it's deeper than that. Listen to this. Emotions. Emotions are short term. Feelings are long term. You can have, listen to this, you can have an emotion that so embeds itself in you that you could have that emotion when you're nine years old and never experience that emotion again until you're 40. And then when that emotion hits, though, because it's been in you so long, it's now a feeling. I have a feeling they don't like me. Why? Because when I was nine, they didn't say hi. You guys laugh, but it isn't funny if it isn't true. How many of you know it is true? Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a feeling. It's an emotion. They're tied together. One speaks long-term, one speaks short-term. Now I'm laying the foundation for this. How emotions gain power. How do emotions gain power over your life? Are you ready for this? Look at this. Be angry and do not what? Sin. Is anger an emotion? Absolutely. So are emotions bad? No. Emotions are not bad. Let me ask you this. Are you created in the image of God? Yes. All right. How many of y'all created in the image of God? Yes. All right. The rest of y'all are aliens. Uh, okay. You're all created in the image of God. Now get this. You were created in the image of God and God himself has emotions. Now why am I saying that? Because... If you grew up in church, most of the time people will say, emotions are bad, just believe the word of God. Emotions are bad, shut them off, believe the word of God. Okay, so whenever you have an emotion, what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to shut it off and believe the word of God. But that doesn't fix the emotion. You still have that emotion. You still have it. It's still in there. It's still on the inside of you. Now get this, it says, be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your what? Wrath. Wrath. And here's what God is really saying with that verse. It's okay to experience an emotion. But you're not to allow that emotion to take a residence on the inside of you. A bird can fly in your house, but he doesn't have to nest in your head. Are y'all picking up what I'm putting down? Come on with my redneck analogies, all right? But the truth of the matter is, it does depend. See, it's the emotional aspect of it. And now watch. Here's what becomes crazy. When you start with a thought, and then it ties itself to an emotion, 
Now you're talking about your life moving in a direction. So watch this. I'm going to do something. And don't worry, I'm going to offend everybody by the time it's over. So if the first one <laughs> doesn't offend you. Well, let, let me go here first. Emotions arise because of what you are thinking about. How many of you guys would agree with that? Every emotion is rooted in what you're thinking. Now watch this. A thought with an emotion has power over you. A thought, a thought in your mind with an emotion has power over you. Absolutely. I'll show you that. I promise you I got it. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> now watch. The same is true. A thought without an emotion has no power. So now, here's what I'm saying. We've often said, you need to control your mind. You need to control your thought life. You need to watch your mind. You need to guard your mind. You need to renew your mind with the word of God. You need to do those things. I am by far believed that. But check this out. If we don't address the other aspect of the soul, called the emotions, then we can't really be healed. Because like I said before, it is possible to know the right thing, but have an emotion contrary to the right thing and follow the emotion and not the right thing. Now, how does an emotion gain power in your life? It gains power because you give it a thought. Or, how about, let me say it the other way. You have a thought that you give an emotion to it. Watch this. You ready? Watch this. Hillary Clinton. You have a thought? And, you, and there's an emotion. Oh, don't worry. I'm going to offend everybody. Don't worry. Donald Trump. You know? You have a thought, and there's an emotional component to it, right? And it's because of that, everybody's all wired up about this election. Okay? And it's because, it, and actually, you can even see it. It's an emotional issue now. It's not even logical. Trust me. It's now emotional. People have tied an emotion to it. Oh, don't worry, I'm not done. How about politics just in general? See, I told you, I'm not done. Politics in general, there's an emotion to it. There's an emotion, watch this, the word politics just in general wouldn't bother you, has no power over you, you don't even care. But when you have an emotion connected to it, it resonates, listen to this, it isn't your mind that you're picking up whenever I flashed Hillary Clinton, it wasn't your mind that said Hillary Clinton, it was your, whoa. <laughs> Some of you, Donald Trump, whoa. You see, well, it's the emotion that's triggering that. Come on, follow me here. I hope, I hope you understand. Watch this. 9-11. It's not the date. I mean, no, there's been many 9-11s over the world history. But that 9-11, you know the one, triggers what? An emotion. There's an emotional component. That's why it has power. I'm showing you natural illustrations so that when we get to you, it'll all make sense. Give me another one. New England Patriots. <laughs> Come on, there's an emotion connected to that. Right? I could go on, cheater, cheaters, pumpkin eaters. How about this one? How about this one? How about this one? How about this one? There's an emotion. You ready? Ex-wife. Ex-wife. Now watch this. Now watch. Let me show you something. This is powerful. This is a perfect illustration of what I'm talking about. How many of you have never had an ex-wife? How many of you, that word doesn't bother you? How many of you, when you see that, you're like, oh, there's an emotion connected to it. Come on now. And now, 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 yeah, sorry about that. But you, 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 do you understand what I'm saying though? It's the emotion that's triggering that. That response in you, it's the emotion. And, there's a, and people say, well, you just need to forgive. You just need to allow the word of God. No, 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 no. This is bigger than all that because it's on the other side of the, of the spectrum of the soul. It has to do with your emotions. Come on, y'all getting what I'm picking up, what I'm putting down? How about this one? Because Michelle was helping me lay out my notes today. Ex-husband. 
She goes, why does it always have to be an ex-wife? Can it be an ex-husband? Okay, ex-husband, husband, ex-husband. Ex it didn't have the same effect. <laughs> All right, makes Michelle feel better. All right, whatever. How about this? How about this? How about this? This fits perfect. Wife. Oh, stop. Come on, that was perfect. <laughs> How do you know? If you're not married, there isn't a, a, an emotional component there, so it's like, whatever. If you're a chick, if you're a chick, you're like, oh, whatever. It doesn't, it doesn't. But if you're a dude that's married, you're like, oh, wife, that'd be me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's an emotion there. <laughs> Good, bad, and ugly. I'm just saying. Come on, how many of y'all are hearing what I'm saying? All I'm doing is bringing up, here's what I'm doing, here's what I'm doing, here's all we're doing right now. I'm bringing up a thought into your mind and I'm showing you how every thought has an emotional component to it. That's all I'm doing right now. I'm trying to get you to see that you are more than thoughts. And here's the deal. We oftentimes address the thoughts, but we don't address the emotional component that has to do with it. Because here's the deal. You can have your thought life right, but if you don't deal with the emotion, the emotion will make you sick in your body. That's Bible right there, y'all. Yeah. It'll make you sick physically. Because watch this. It's your emotions that release chemicals into your body. It's your emotions that you ground yourself. It, your emotions control a lot more than you'd ever think it would. Yeah, absolutely. You get bad service tonight when you go eat, there'll be an emotional component, component connected to an action. Come on, am I right? And it's not because in your mind, I know, I know this girl's 17 and will probably lose her job, but I don't give a rip. My steak sucks. <laughs> Come on, am I right? It's the emotion. It's the emotion. I remember the first time I ever had a huge fit, emotional fit. I do. I can, I'm sure I've had plenty of them, but this one in particular was the first time I had had a drill and I was redoing a 55 Chevy. And I had a drill, and I didn't have a, a sander because I didn't have an air compressor. I was 16 years old. And I took a wire wheel to this car, and I wire wheeled all the paint off of it. I know, dumb idea now, but just hear me. I'm 16. <laughs> so I wire wheeled the car. I get it all clean down the metal, and the drill stopped, okay? So I went and bought another drill. At that time, Kmart was out here on the bypass. Anybody remember that? Hobby Lobby is now? Kmart was there, and I went in there, and I bought a brand-new drill. I took it home, I used it for like a day and a half, okay? Now I'm grinding paint off of a car. I brought it back in there because it stopped. And I said, I'm sorry, but the drill stopped. I'm 16 years old, got my driver's license. Lady said, I'm sorry, sir, but this drill looks used. <laughs> How many of you know at this point I'm thinking, if this is the battle of the minds, I'm gonna win. Of course it's used, lady. I just bought it yesterday, and I want a new one. This one stopped. She goes, well, I'm sorry. It looks like you've abused this drill. I said, listen, I just bought it. it it's supposed to last more than a day and a half. If I used it all night and day, it should last more than a day and a half. I mean, come on, lady. I want a new drill. She's like, we're not giving you a new drill. I got so mad, I told him, 16 years old, I'm driving my car through that front bay window right there. How many of you know I was, I was asked to leave? <laughs> it, was, it was over. Charlie had to leave. Now, in my mind, did I know that was wrong? Yeah. Yeah. But did my emotions? My emotions were like, this feels good. This brings me pleasure to threaten this lady. I'm just saying, come on. See what I'm saying? So it isn't just about knowing the right thing. It's about allowing your emotions to come under God's spirit and allow him to control our emotions. Amen. All right? So listen to this. Here's another one. All right, so that we get it. Husband, does that bring a thought? How about this one? This one will work for everybody. Children. Depending on which stage of life, bring, d depends on which emotion you have. You know, Miss Fitzlana and them, they're, man, they're... they're Man, I love our baby and all that. My daughter's getting married. I'm like, does the bleeding stop? 
at any point. You know what I mean? Everybody has different emotions, right? Depending on where you're at in life and the stage of life. All right, so get this. Here's what I'm saying in a nutshell. Thoughts have no power unless they are joined to an emotion. Thoughts have no power unless they are joined to an emotion. Now, here's my point in saying that. Get this. If you have a thought that comes into your mind, should you recognize that thought and be leery of assigning an emotion to it? Absolutely. Absolutely. And this is kind of one of those chicken or the egg come first. Michelle and I were talking just the last couple of days, and I was like, which comes first? Is it the thought that leads to the emotion, or is it the emotion that brings the thought up? Are y'all are following me? I know you're probably like, why would you think of that? I don't know. I was just trying to figure out which one happens first. And I think it depends on the scenario. I know there are times in my life where I don't even think something. It's just there's an emotion there. And then it causes me to react. Or flip it around. Sometimes there's a thought that I begin to meditate on and I assign it an emotion. Come on, y'all hear what I'm saying? For example, right now deer hunting season started. Yeah, baby. <laughs> It's a little warm. But anyway, but deer hunting season has started. But can I tell you the emotion that I attach to deer hunting has nothing to do with killing an animal. Actually, I, feel, I, I don't really like to kill animals unless I'm going to eat them. Here's, here's what the emotion comes. Here, seriously, here's the thought that I've assigned an emotion to. Every time I think of hunting, I think of Toph and I and Michael being out there at Dixon Seacrease's property, shooting a deer and us tracking it and how much fun that was and how exciting that was and how we have a story to tell. That's what I assign to it. So to me, deer hunting is not about the animal. It's about the experience. It's about the, the joy of being with your friends. It's about the joy of, of what you do together. Come on, anybody know what I'm saying? So, so I assign that activity to to an emotion, and therefore I'm drawn to that activity. Y'all hearing what I'm saying? Now watch this. I could very well do the same with drinking and clubbing, or cussing my neighbor out, or whatever you want to make up. And there's where you have to recognize, in my mind, I know that's wrong, therefore God help me unplug my emotion from that negative activity that's destroying my life. This is why people are druggy, drug addicts. This is why people are alcoholics. It's not that in their minds they know they shouldn't be doing that stuff. You didn't have to tell my dad that's dumb, dad. Don't be taking drugs. You didn't have to tell him that. But guess what? They have an emotion. And they assigned it to an activity. And it's the emotion that they love. So the activity is just the, the activity. Come on, am I, am I making sense? I hope so. I hope so. I hope so. I hope it makes sense. And if you'll look at your life, look at your life and ask yourself, why do I do what I do? Most of the time, it's not because your mind says you should or shouldn't do it. Most of the time, it's because your feelings are connected to it. I'll give me another in real quick here. We moved to Greentown after I got out of the military. And I loved living in Greentown. Now, not for the same reason Michelle loves living in Greentown. We've talked about this before. Not you guys, her and I. When I was a kid, we moved a lot because of my dad in drugs. Okay? Moved to Indiana, moved back and forth a couple different times, finally settled in Kokomo. Then my mom got a divorce and she moved back to Louisiana. I'm in the military, moving all around. Finally, I get out of the military, we moved to Greentown. And I told Michelle, I said, once we move to Greentown, I'm never moving. I'm just never moving. Now, now, she lives in Greentown because her family's there and all that. I live in Greentown because all of my life, I wanted a place that I could walk into the grocery store and they'd say, hi, Charlie. I, got, I could go into the gas station and give them a hard time and they know me. And I could go, because to me, that to me is community. That, watch this, that makes me feel secure and accepted and loved. Come on, y'all follow me? So because of that, I like it there. Do you, you see what I'm saying? It has nothing to do with where the geographical, it has to do with the feeling it gives me. 
You can take your life and look at everything you do. And, and here's my point. I'm not done with my message. Here in a couple hours, I'll be done. But, but look at your life and ask yourself, why do I do what I do? And you will find out that most of the time it's because it is connected to an emotion deep down on the inside of you. And if the activity is godly, then there's nothing wrong with that emotion being assigned to it. But if the activity is ungodly and wrong, then you have to ask yourself, not that I do I know the right thing. And let me just tell you this. You getting free from the negative thing is not you going, I know the right thing, I know the right thing, I know. You know the right thing, yes. You need to ask God to help you unplug your emotion from the wrong thing. So that you don't get the joy and the satisfaction and the fulfillment out of that thing that's actually destroying you. And it could be something as simple as food. It could be something as simple as, you know, you feeling like you got to tell everybody how you feel. Everything you do could be filtered through what I'm saying tonight. Because your emotions can destroy your life. And yet at the same time, they could be a huge asset. All right? Now check this out. Emotions that affect true faith. Let's talk about it. Emotions affect true faith. So hear me out. Just hear me out on this. Check this out. True belief, true belief, true faith is when you're thinking and your feelings, you're thinking and your feelings, which are long-term emotions. Remember, feelings are long-term emotions. When you're thinking and your feeling are in harmonious together. When they're together, you have belief or faith. You follow me? So watch this. When you have a belief, or I'm sorry, when you think a thing and you feel a thing. Whenever I gave my heart to Christ when I was about 15 years old, I remember thinking a thing, I need to be saved. And I remember feeling a thing. I mean, I started crying at the altar, bawling. Why? I don't know. I just started crying. I didn't know. But my point is this. I'll never forget that moment. Why? It was a combination of what I was thinking and what I was feeling. When you have a, a combination of thinking and feeling, and once they marry each other, then it becomes a belief system. You follow me? So watch this. All blonde-headed people are rude. That's a thought. Then you go to the movie theater, and every blonde-headed person is nasty to you. You're pointing at your wife. <laughs> <laughs> and then you go to Chili's and the blonde chick there is nasty to you. It only takes a few of those episodes in one day for you to get the impression all blonde-headed people are jerks. It becomes a belief system. And that's where your faith is at, right? Are y'all, uh, that's a bad analogy, huh? <laughs> but how many of y'all are picking up what I'm saying? When you take a belief and marry it to an emotion, now you have true faith or true belief. Same way is true the other way. Thinking plus feeling, if your feelings disagree with what you're thinking, it becomes unbelief or a lack of faith. In other words, check this out. You can say all day, by his stripes I am healed, by his stripes I am healed, by his stripes I am healed. But if you lack the emotional component of what those words are supposed to bring into your heart, you don't have true faith. Because true faith is a combination of the soul, the mind, will, and emotions being in agreement. So if your mind says one thing but your emotions say another, the soul is not in agreement, therefore you don't have true faith. But when the mind, will, and emotions are in complete agreement, like right now, I know God is a healer. I know it. I don't even have to question it. I know it. I feel it. It's more than a feeling. Boston, you might know. Living in something somewhere. It's somewhat like that. It's close. You know? How many of you know, though, it is, life is more than a feeling? Yes. Right? And it's a. I said I wasn't going to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> Feelings have the power of association in your life also. Where minds, thoughts don't. When I think of more than a feeling, that song, I think of hanging out at the skating rink playing that record. 
my mind immediately jumps back to 1988, 1989. You know what I mean? And they, I think about skating rink. You know what I mean? Because, and now watch, it isn't my mind that actually is holding that. It's the emotion connected to that experience. Are y'all, y'all picking up what I'm putting down? But, but, but to have, bottom line is, to have true faith, you have to make sure that your emotions in your mind line up. So here's my point. If you're believing God for a financial breakthrough, and your mind is like, yes, we are going to believe God. And your emotions are like, oh, I just don't think God's going to do it. Can I tell you that is a disagreement in your own heart, and you are not going to win that battle? Well, then, Pastor Charlie, what should I do? You need to ask the Lord how to change the emotional component that's connected to you in your heart. I'm going to have to deal with that next week, but I hope, I'm, I'm, I hope you're getting what I'm saying. How many of you are getting it? Getting it? Is, it understand, is it making sense? Yes. All right. Now, watch this. Watch this. Here we go. A little bit further here. Look at this. Thinking plus feeling plus what you say is a true belief system. Thinking plus feeling plus what's coming out of your mouth. Say, well, Pastor Charlie, how is that? Because it's out of the abundance of the heart man speaks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, listen to this. this. Several years ago, the Lord told me why lying is so detrimental to us. Do you know why? Do you know why lying is so detrimental to you? We'll say it dishonors God. Yeah, we understand that. I'm, I'm not here to argue that. You know that. I know that. We all know. But let me tell you what lying does. Lying puts your emotions, your mind, and your will all at odds against each other. Your mind knows what you're saying is false. Your emotions know it's false. But what's coming out of your mouth, you're speaking as if it's a truth. This is one of the reasons, just hear me out on this, that I believe that Hollywood stars have such a, a, a misunderstanding of what truth is. Because they're continually paid to say things out of their mouth. God never created us this way. Say things out of their mouth that their heart and their mind don't believe. God didn't wire you that way. You can't just unplug your soul from who you are. I'll stop, I'll stop, I'll stop. Because <laughs> some of you are like, okay, we're getting deep now. <laughs> How many of you can see what I'm saying, though? You ever, you ever listen to these people and it's like, what planet did they come from? Where are they coming from? They're clueless. No, they're confused. And I mean that in the truest sense. Their mind, their will, and emotions all are in opposite, opposing directions. So they really don't know how to properly think and understand. Okay, praise God. That'll make Fortune 500 right there. All right, listen to this. Thinking, feeling, what to say, a true belief. Thoughts plus feelings, long-term emotions, influence the body even. Do you know that? That it even influences the body. It influences the body. I know one time, one time, this was so vivid to me, and I try my best to keep my emotions under control. It was in the middle of the night. We were laying in bed. We were asleep. My phone rings. My phone rings. Someone called. It was very, very just disruptive information, information that could have waited the next day, uh, and it, it just upset me to where I couldn't go back to sleep. I kid you not, before the morning, before the morning, I was, my stomach was sick, I was sick to my stomach, and I had a big old fever blister on my face. Your emotions, if left unchecked, will trigger all kinds of negative things in your body. All kinds of negative things, if you don't keep them under control and keep them in check. Y'all hearing what I'm saying? It will absolutely run rampant. Thinking, feelings, check this out. Thinking plus feelings write things upon your heart. If you think a thing and you have an emotion and you attached yourself to that, it writes that on your heart. It writes it on your heart. And as a pastor, I deal a lot with people in their heart. And what I oftentimes have to do is go in there and have them rewire their heart. Because it's the heart. The heart is the mind, will, and emotions coming together. All right? Their heart has to be, think about it. Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, Man speaks. Mind, will, and emotions, they speak. You follow me? All right. So check this out. 
Last thing. Let's see here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where am I at? Where am I at? Yeah, yeah. Here, check this out. I'm almost done. Keep your heart with all diligence. For out of it springs all the issues of life, right? Keep your what? Heart. Heart. The combination of your mind, will, and emotions on the inside of you. Your soul. All right? And I'll break it down better next week, but you get what I'm saying. Keep your heart. Guard your heart. Don't let just any thought combined with any emotion take up residence on the inside of you. Because if that thought and that emotion take up residence on the inside of you, it will create those impressions on your heart. And then your heart, listen to this, you can quote scripture all day, but if your heart is bound, you're bound. Follow me? No, I, I know, the, I've, I've met people. I've met people that know the Bible better than I do, but they're in bondage. And it's because, not because they don't know the word and they don't know truth. It's just because they have an, an emotion connected to a thought that is tying them on the inside of their heart. And they can't live in freedom and liberty and live for God the right way anyway. All right, check this out. Emotions. What emotions do I need to change or challenge in my heart? What emotions do I need to change or challenge? Every time. Every time, every time we talk about cooking, I want to hit him with a pan. Okay, you may want to address that. Start there. Come on, y'all get what I'm saying? Hey, listen, I'll give you one. Now watch, everybody's going to do this. Everybody's going to do this to me because they're just going to pick on me. But one of the things that I can't stand, it's just, it's just a number one pet peeve, is if somebody points at me and does this. Because I feel like I'm in trouble. And I didn't do nothing wrong. Yeah? More. Now watch, everybody's going like. Okay, I'll give you another one. I'll, I'll, I'll give you another one. When people treat me like I'm stupid. Now, now you know a lot about my past. You know a lot about, I've, I mean, even tonight I've shared with you about kindergarten and first grade. Why would that trigger an emotion on the inside of me? Follow me? Follow me? It's not that my thought life knows she probably doesn't think I'm stupid, but she just talked to me like I'm stupid. And that triggered an emotion on the inside of me. And my mind better put it in check or uh, Charlie's going to go off. <laughs> Seriously, you guys think I'm kidding? I'll give you one. So I, I love Saturday night because I can tell you a little bit more. <laughs> I remember asking Michelle about that. This is a true story. We go to parent teacher conference. You remember? You know where I'm at? <laughs> now, mind you, at this point, I have my bachelor's. I'm on my way my, to my master's and doctorate, okay? I'm sitting across from this teacher, and she's explaining to me that my daughter has trouble reading. And I said, that's okay. And I start listing a couple things that she, she could try. And I, and I only asked, well, like, well, well, did you guys try this, or did you try that? And she's like... And Michelle said, when we sat down, she said Whitney had trouble reading. Michelle said, yeah, her dad had trouble reading as a young child and all that stuff and all that. So she starts telling us the eval of Whitney. And then uh, when it all gets said and done, she go, I, I started asking her, pushing back on it. Like, okay, did you try this? Did you try that? She goes, and she looked at Michelle when they're kind of playing the thing. She goes, she goes, I know you struggle with it. So... Am I right? <laughs> Their thought, life, no. <laughs> Emotion, oh yeah. Oh yeah, I wanted to rip that lady's head off and shove it in the desk, man. <laughs> I was ready to choke that lady. I kid you not, man. And it had, and, and my, my, my point is, my, my point is, I could have, you know? Now, now, so, so here's my point. I'm spirit-filled, love God, and a pastor at this point. I'm not supposed to think this way. Listen to this. It wasn't in my thinking. Y'all hearing what I'm saying? It wasn't in my thinking. My thinking was, she doesn't know you from anybody. That was my thinking. My emotions. I'm going to rip your head off, lady. <laughs> Emotion. Come on, anybody know what I'm saying? So, so my point is this. As believers, 
You can't just worry about your thought life. You need to make sure your emotions are being checked in on. Because even after that, after I cooled off, it takes me about two days to wind down from something like that. <laughs> so after a couple days, I thought to myself, why was I so upset about that? Why did I go home just in a fit of rage? And it's hard to go home and go, yeah, your teacher was nice. <laughs> Come on, you might know what I'm saying? I'm going to jump that lady. Hope, hope she don't have tenure. I'll get her fired. But anyway, <laughs> see, what emotions do I need to challenge or change? Why do I feel that way? Why, why, why am I processing that that way? When someone said that to me, why did that word or that statement, why did that trigger that in me? It wasn't my mind, it was my emotions that it triggered. Why? Lord, help me to know how to deal with that in my life. Help me to know what in my past, present, or future I have to deal with so I can conquer that thought. Come on, you might know what I'm saying? Here's the last one here. Which emotions do I need to follow? Which ones do I need to follow? You know, following God is emotional. It's okay to feel God. It's okay. It's okay to sense God. It's okay. It's good to have positive emotions. Positive emotions release positive things into your heart and into your life. Y'all hear what I'm saying? So I'll leave you with that challenge right there. What emotions do I need to challenge or change in my heart? And which emotions do I need to follow in my life? Which ones do I need to follow? Which ones do I need to follow and just keep plugging along with? How many of you are blessed? Did you get something out of it? Give the Lord a big clap, praise God. Let me pray for you.